Hi everyone. Good to see you all joining in. afternoon good to see you all Hey everyone, we're just waiting for our guests to join, so do stay. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Sumita, good afternoon. So you're able to see me yes. and hear me? Yes, yes. yes. I had a Wonderful. little confusion, but now I'm uh, I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can hear you as well. Okay. So we will begin this uh, session. Uh, welcome yes. everyone to this uh, Insta Live uh, author interview series hosted by Clever Fox Publishing. I'm Sumita, project manager at Clever Fox. So today we have with us. And uh, we're hosting an uh, exclusive conversation with an incredibly talented author, Anupama Tikudhar. So do join us in uh, as we delve into the inspiration behind her latest work and get an insight into the creative process. So before I begin, I would like to share a few words about Anupama. So just. Despite having her father's Zeiss Rangefinder 35mm camera available throughout her childhood to experiment with photography, only 12 years ago did Anupama Tikudhar take photography seriously. She describes herself as an intuitive photographer. She travels regularly and has clicked photographs in various parts of the world and in India. Anupama discovered her passion for photography on her travels and now wonders whether photography spurs her travels or the other way around. She has been a student of physics, is a science buff, an occasional birder, a movie addict, a former Suzuki mom, and an avid music listener, among others. She is now trying her hand as a freelance graphic designer. Welcome, Anupama, and thank you so much for joining yes. us today. Thank you for having me here. So, um, at the outset, Please share with us what sparked your deep commitment to photography. Uh, um, I would say 
I started traveling regularly from 2008, uh, different parts of India and the world. And then at around 2010, I started taking pictures. And uh, once I started, I found that I enjoyed the process thoroughly. I became an addict, like I would, I just was uh, obsessed with taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And I found that I am pretty good at it because uh, I was getting feedback from photographers as well as sharing on uh, social media. Uh, so I, I I started enjoying and that's how, you know, it sort of uh, travel pushed my photography interest and photography pushed my, uh, you know, ventures, travel ventures. So it, it's like this. Yeah. So what inspired you to write Peering Through the Glass? Was it a, uh, you had a collection of photographs and you wanted a way to present it or was it like your travels inspired you to put all the photographs together. Uh, what was it? I, I, as I said, I've been traveling, uh, taking pictures since uh, 2010. I have, of course, my skills have improved over time. But somewhere down the line, I found that I had a repository of uh, photographs from, you know, different themes and uh, uh, from different parts of the world. So. Uh, I I was just I toyed with the idea initially uh, to have an exhibition, uh, but then I thought that uh, having it in a book format there is more permanence, yes. and you have a lot of uh, information also can be you know added in a book. So I then finally I it all came together, and then some years back then I started putting it together in a book format. In fact, I even did a small course, one of the reasons in graphic design, one of the reasons being that I wanted to design the book myself. I did not want to you know, consult with anybody. Yeah. So I had total control over all the creative parts. So that's how it happened. Yeah. Lovely. Um, in what ways would you say this book differs from other traditional travel guides? From what I understand, understand about travel guides they give you uh, logistic guidance they give you guidance about pricing and you know there is uh, you know whatever it could be influenced by uh, uh, it's like a paid ad also in some cases yeah so uh, that was certainly not the uh, this is not the format of the book I had a collection of pictures and I used the pictures to form a narrative so it is not that I am recommending anybody to go to these places or, you know, so I, it's not a, it's, it's an, it's a narrative. It's a narration of my experiences. So in this particular case, it was about Canada. Okay. Um, could you share a bit about your own experiences as a shutterbug with a travel bug? So do you click everything or have, how have these experiences shaped the narrative of your book? Uh, I mentioned earlier that I'm, I'm an obsessive photographer. Mm -hmm. It's reduced a bit, but initially I would, I, especially on say this train journey, I think I spent most of the daylight hours near, uh, you know, just outside a cabin. You have that space which is open to the outside you know the train is moving but there is no yes. glass it's just too low yes so i think i must have spent the entire time on both sides of the train you know both uh, sides i was just clicking pictures yes. at all times so i think i did not spend much time on my seat <laughs> and in my cabin but i was just taking pictures so anything you know just you know something some intuitive it was some intuition i said i have to take this picture it looks good so that's how I spent my, uh, you know, this, this train journey and uh, the rest of the journey. So uh, that's how it is. I'm curious, um, did you, uh, when you decided to, uh, you know, uh, spend uh, uh, more time uh, doing uh, photography, taking pictures and, uh, uh, you know, uh, lending a more serious uh, bend to the whole uh, activity, did you, um, did you go through a kind of training or was it all self-taught? I am I'm mostly self-taught, but I did a couple of, you know, you have these uh, 
expert photographers, they have a seminar. Right. I have attended a couple of them. But uh, that is just to give a little structure, but I, it's not helped so much because I'm still a very spontaneous photographer. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, photography, they, you know, wait at a location and then they do all the settings right. They want the light right. and That's not my type of photography. I just go with the flow and, you know, most of the time when you're traveling, you cannot afford to, you know, uh, stay in a location and wait for the ideal time. Mine is just like a story. You know, it's not like I like a location and I will take pictures from all angles. It's not that sort of photography. But, so that's uh, interesting because I was going to ask you, uh, do you believe that there's a perfect moment to capture a photograph or do you believe in going with the flow and embrace the spontaneity of the moment? And you've just answered that. Um, so uh, do you do you look at technicalities or, you know, you capture a little that? bit, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But at times there is no time to, you know, do all your settings and, you know, have that perfect shot. So right. you will miss the moment yeah. then, uh, if you if you uh, if you go that down that way. Yeah. So the title "Peering Through the Glass" suggests a unique perspective. Could you elaborate on the significance of this title and how it reflects the book's uh, content? Yeah, it is both a literal. Uh, there is a literal take as well as a figurative, metaphorical take. Right. Um, Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, in around two, uh, I think in 2010, we went to Scandinavia and yeah. uh, we went to this place called Bergen in Norway. And yeah. it was the, it was in May, which is off season. Mm -hmm. And that's of course very chilly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went to this estate of Edward Grieg. He is like, um, he's one of probably Norway's most famous uh, uh, composer and pianist. Okay. Western classical musician okay. and his estate he's of course long gone his mm. estate is almost like a museum mm. and uh, I had my camera this was I think the first year I actually had a you know I had started taking pictures a little more seriously and uh, as, as I said it was off season so the number of people in that estate were very less less and, I did not want to do the conventional thing. So I was just roaming around in the estate and I saw this little room or a studio. Uh, since, you know, it was dark, but since it was not in season, they had locked it. There weren't too many. So it was not open to public and uh, it was not lit. And I went and, we, you know, the windows, latticed windows or the lattice doors rather, you know, mm. they're glass and there's a frame. So okay. I just looked into the room and it was a vision, you know, it was so beautiful. Uh, the light, there was a window just opposite this door and there was light peeping in. So yeah. that natural light was semi illuminating that room and it was so beautiful. I took my camera out and took a picture. I stuck the lens to the glass door and I just took a picture. And that is why I, literally it means peering through the glass. And yeah. and also figuratively or metaphorically is the lens is glass. Mm -hmm. So all my experiences, you know, in the picture yeah. form, they are peering through this glass. And it is a view from my, the way I see the world through the lens. So I'm peering through the glass and presenting my view. So that is how peering through the glass. This is my, I think to date it is one of my, probably quite top 10 favorite pictures. And it also forms the cover of my uh, book. So, yeah. So this book, Peering Through the Glass, this photograph is the cover, the cover of, the of the book. So, oh, yeah, okay. I have vectorized it on the cover and inside I have even uh, put the real picture, you know, the, as I took it. So. That's lovely. That's very yeah. interesting to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what are some of the other themes you have captured in your book? I know you haven't stuck to any particular theme, but what, what can the reader expect? See, first, I have to give you a little background. This is my travels via train, via road, and via cruise. So I, I, this was the first time, actually, I, we found a travel agent in Canada and, sort of, and planned the trip with the travel agent. 
Mm. And uh, so we wanted to see Canada and train is, you know, you don't, you don't get disturbed. You just sit in one place and you get to see everything on either side. These are those, those fantastic trains now, which have come to India also now, which have got these glass, huge glass windows and they have the domes. Uh, yeah. So for this was a novelty I, we had never seen I, we traveled as a family right. we had never seen anything like that in India before so it was a novelty so we wanted to see this uh, you know we wanted to explore through train then we did a bit by road and then we did a cruise also that was the following year so um, so what was the question I have got distracted what what different types of things right. can so actually i have not actively sought whatever i saw out of the windows it right. is nature there is um, you know there are birds there is culture there is architecture there are engineering marvels whatever i saw i just captured it so um, so I couldn't say there's any theme. It's just like Canada through my eyes. Whatever we have seen, we just saw a fraction of Canada, right. which was quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but it was still a very, it's not a fraction of Canada. Canada's much more. So that's all, that's all we did. So. Uh, I would encourage our viewers to drop in any questions or comments that you'd like. And if uh, time permits, I'll definitely post that to Anupama. Um, Anupama, can you discuss any particular destination or an experience featured in your book in the form of your photographs, uh, which had a profound impact on you? One you mentioned is the book cover that you just uh, discussed with us, but anything else that had an equally profound impact? The book cover is not from Canada. It is from yeah. Norway. Yeah. I wouldn't say there was any... Uh, I wouldn't call it profound, but I was overwhelmed at every juncture. Mm. You know, the landscapes are fantastic. Uh, you know, the way, the approach to everything is very different. Mm. Um, in fact, it was so interesting on the train. We had uh, ex-railway employees after retirement. You okay. Know, they, they, they were taking a holiday on the train. <laughs> So they wanted to see what they may have heard throughout their career. So now that they were retired, so they yeah. were traveling by yeah. train. So there were there's so many experiences. It's difficult to you know actually say if any of them had a profound effect. But it was overwhelming in many ways. So I'm sure. Yeah, so that's yeah. And you must be meeting so many people and in different uh, of different cultures. So. Um, could you tell us briefly the role of cultural elements in your photography and how they influence the overall narrative of your travelogue? In this particular case, um, I, um, I I wouldn't say that I had so much in this particular case. I did not interact okay. uh, with so many people to you know to have that perspective. Yeah. In the sense that, you know, in depth, you know, talking, it wasn't so much because there was a mix, all or visitors. Yes. So um, I didn't particularly get a chance. But um, but you, I, through the book, I have, you know, through the text of the book, I have tried to say that there are a lot of indigenous cultures mm -hmm. and they have affected the way Canada is today. Mm -hmm. And there are parts which are um, uh, very rural. Yeah. And there are parts which are very small parts. Most of Canada is uninhabited. You know, there are very few people. So the density is very less in certain parts. So culturally, uh, I can't say. I mean, it's just an, int you know, yeah. it's visually more. But we get to see the history, the as I said, the history, culture, uh, not through interpersonal interaction, but through the artifacts. Oh, and the, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Uh, through your surroundings and yes, uh, yes, yes. through your lens. Um, yes. Would, can you share with us what is the most beautiful or interesting place you would have captured in India through your travel? In India? Oh, I have, I have <laughs> traveled in India quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, what I, I would say an experience. The most cherished uh, and, uh, memory not cherished this is an experience which i would have in normal circumstances not done 
Okay. Uh, I don't like to go to very crowded places, mm -hmm. but in 2013, I think there was a Mahakum and I <laughs> attended that. I mean, it's very unusual for me to go to such a place. And it was, I went with a purely photographic, uh, you know, photography, uh, uh, you know, to have a photographic experience, yeah. not, you know, not to uh, participate in any, uh, what do you call it? It was not a religious moment for me. Mm -hmm. It was more like I wanted to take pictures. Mm -hmm. So that was something which the experience was fantastic. Somebody had arranged, offered this, and I just happened to see it again, thanks to Facebook. I got to see that something is being organized, and I just went. And it was I think quite it's an experience. It's yeah. sure a once in a lifetime. Uh, Absolutely. I will never go again to a Kumbela. <laughs> But it was a fantastic experience. And I hope to, you know, I am planning a book on black and whites. Oh, and after that, I plan to do a book on India. I have not yet figured out how I will uh, organize it. Um, because I have a lot of pictures on India also, but I don't know how to organize it into a book form yet. I, I'm sure you will find a way. Yeah, and yeah. We look for a collaboration. Right with you on that as well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, are there any uh, specific techniques or equipment uh, you found particularly useful in capturing the essence of different locations we're not technical we don't know the technical terms yeah. there's something specific that you always keep in mind before um, taking that mm. Look, I, actually, the equipment is important for certain aspects, like if you do birding mm -hmm. or if you want to do um, very fine art photography, then your equipment is good. The settings, you have to have it, the lighting has to be perfect. But the type of photography I do, the spur of the moment, I started out with a simple point and shoot camera mm -hmm. and I got great pictures. Of course, they may not be very great to print, but you know, just to keep in digital format, they're fantastic uh, compositions. I have got those. <laughs> so, uh, also, um, uh, th this is all. You you just have to ha keep an open mind, and you just have to look. Actually, look, and something will come to you. It will be a you'll have an inspired moment, and you would just. Uh, um, you just click the picture. You can do it from your mobile also. I hate mobile photography, but those, okay. who, those who want can. So, and we shouldn't, uh, focus shouldn't be like, oh, it, it, this is a Instagram ready picture or uh, I have bragging rights. That should not be the focus. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it all comes in place. It comes with a lot of, it's, you know, you keep taking pictures and then suddenly one day you will, discover that you're taking great pictures. That's a great, great uh, yeah. tip yeah. and great motivation for all of us uh, yes. Yes. to um, uh, listen yes. to. And uh, are there any photo photographers or writers who have influenced your work in both photography and travel writing? Not really. I actually it is. I keep looking at uh, photographs. I can't. Of course, there is the Ansel Adams. Of, he is like the uh, godfather of nature landscape photography he used to do it in black and white so there are many influences i can't particularly name any but uh, i keep looking at pictures of various photographers and uh, uh, somehow yes. on some subconscious level it influences you yeah, yeah. 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 you just need to uh, yeah. seek it yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, your book aims to awaken the dormant wanderlust readers. Mm. How do you hope that writing will achieve this? This book is just like, like a, you know, like you have those uh, appetizers or what do you call it, those taste uh, tasting <laughs> dishes. You know, you once you get a taste of it, you go through a book and you get a taste of it. It, you know, in travel for the real reasons. I mean, it's this type of traveling is like an experiential thing. So everybody has their own, uh, you know, what for what preferred form of traveling or preferred place to travel or type of travel. So find that sweet spot, and um, I, I hope with this book, you know, 
people will get little inspired and want to travel just for the sake of the experience, uh, not as a break from routine or whatever, as I said, Instagram ready pictures, yes. and touristy spots, yes. you know, so that's what I hope. Enjoy being in that space in that moment. Right, right. So, um, how do you believe travel and exploration contribute to personal growth and development, Anupama? You yourself have experienced it and you've uh, written this book now, you've put together the visuals and the stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, um, how do you believe that it helps in personal growth and apart from, like you said, taking, uh, taking time off and a break from routine, how else do you, uh, do you believe it helps? Well, it could be, uh, you know, either an exotic location or a local place, you know, mm -hmm. close by from where you live. There's always something which you can learn in places uh, outside the country. You you see how they, uh, the, the way they conserve their uh, nature, they preserve their heritage. That is a very important lesson, not from the, uh, you know, point of view of how governments do it you know as a person it somehow influences you you become more sensitive you become more responsible That's very valid. Uh, yeah and then you you uh, also become more tolerant of you know there's space for all sorts so and you learn somehow you learn it's just like you know it's 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 better than any history geography textbook that you have uh, ever been forced to read you know this is like experiencing i you know this i recently re-saw this movie it's one of my favorite movies goodwill hunting and the character of robin williams who is a psychiatrist and the character matt damon who is like an autodidact you know he's a mathematical genius but uh, he's very troubled so so Robin William tells him that you may have read all the books on Michelangelo and read everything about Sistine Chapel, but uh, until and unless you go to Sistine Chapel and look up at the ceiling and then you get the smells and sights and sounds, you will not have experienced it. So you can quote any book, you can watch hundreds of documentaries, and uh, but that experience, uh, you know, it that comes, experience changes you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It changes you. Yeah. And uh, what advice would you give to aspiring photographers interested in their own uh, travelog like you've just done? Always document. You know, I wrote. I taken these pictures over ten years back, and mm -hmm. I had to do. You know, this was a big difficulty because I don't, I was just taking, clicking pictures, but I had to give some context and some textual description. I had to do a lot of research. A difficult for you to recall and then... Yeah, of course. This was, I didn't even know what a picture I have taken in some cases because I said, as we were moving, I was taking pictures. So then I had to do a Google map. Thank you. Google. <laughs> I actually sat with Google map. I had a rough idea the way we were going. So I had to sit with Google map and a lot of do a lot of research. And then I actually could, you know, pinpoint these very remote places. And so uh, take notes either on your, you know, take voice notes or take pictures. It may be not good pictures, yeah, but take pictures. You have, you have yeah. all the gadgets. And right, the gadgets. right, right. So uh, observe and take notes. And, uh, and of course, Try keep keep if it's your, if you're a photographer keep taking pictures. <laughs> you you will evolve. Even I have evolved as a photographer. <laughs> yeah. um, so would you say this was one of your main challenges while putting the um, putting the yes, yes. Yeah, storytelling part right. and for you to recall and, you know yes. uh, and, <clears throat> yeah. This is, of course, I had to do a lot of research. Mm. And secondly, I had to decide what to leave out mm. because uh, I had, you know, this book, this, this has got around close to 200 images and this book is around 300 pages, <laughs> which is huge. So uh, it was 